Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and this is a three-part video series on filtering data in Excel. Excel filters are an extremely powerful and helpful feature of Excel that every Excel user should know. Filters help us prepare our data for reports and analysis and tie out numbers. They are probably the most important tool in Excel for data mining and cleansing. In this video series, we will learn how we can get the most out of the filters feature in Excel. In this first video, I'm going to explain how to apply filters to your data ranges and the advantages of using Excel tables for filtering. I will also share a few shortcuts for navigating filtered ranges with a lot of columns. The second video is all about keyboard shortcuts for the filter drop-down menus. These shortcuts will save you a ton of time when working with filters. In the third video, we will look at how to apply filters to multiple columns. You will learn about the logic and rules that Excel uses when applying filters and how to filter multiple columns with OR logic. Throughout this video series, I will also be sharing the new FilterMate add-in. I have developed this Excel add-in to help us save time when working with filtered ranges and tables in Excel. You don't need to have FilterMate to work with filters in Excel, but it will definitely make life easier with some of our most common filtering tasks. So let's take a look at how these filters work. So the first thing we'll see here in this example sheet is that we have filters applied to this range. And we can tell that because we can see the filter drop-down icon right here in the header row of the range. So this top row here is considered the header row, and we can see that we have these filter drop-down icons. And when we click on these, this will open the filter drop-down menu here where we can apply filters. So to turn these uh, filters on or off, you can just select any cell inside your data range here, and then go to the data tab on the ribbon and click the filter button. Now this is a toggle button. We can see that it's currently turned on. And if we click it again, that will turn the filters off or remove those filter drop down buttons right there within our range. So again, we can select any cell here. It doesn't have to be the header cell and click the filter button to turn those filter icons on. And the keyboard shortcut for that is control shift L. So if you hover over the filter uh, menu or the filter button here, you'll see the uh, shortcut key right here. It, which right here, which is control shift L. So that allows us to turn the filters on or off. Now, once we have the filters on, uh, we can go ahead and use these filter drop-down menus to apply filters. So if I wanted to filter this list here to only see uh, the rows for Andrew, which means I would hide all other rows except for the rows that contain the word Andrew here in column D, I can just click this filter drop-down menu here and down here in this list, this checkbox list, I can just uh, uncheck select all and then uh, check the item for Andrew and hit OK. And that will hide all the rows. It's not deleting rows. It's just hiding the rows that do not contain the word Andrew and displaying or making visible the rows that do contain the word Andrew. And you can also see here that uh, the rows have just been hidden. If you look at the row number over here, uh, nothing has been resorted or anything like that. Uh, the rows all stay the same. It's just uh, hiding the rows that do not contain the word Andrew. Now you'll also notice here that once I applied a filter to this particular column, the filter drop-down icon button has changed and we can see a little filter icon right there uh, in the filter drop-down button with the little drop-down button next to it. So this lets us know that a filter has been applied to this particular column. And we can apply filters to multiple columns. So if I wanted to uh, maybe filter this quantity column for any number greater than 80. I can apply a number filter here and I'll just see greater than and then type 80 in this box and hit OK. And that will again apply a filter here for any quantity greater than 80. So now we have a filter applied for salesperson. We could see that with the filter drop down icons changed right there and uh, quantity greater than 80. And we can also see that we have that filter drop down icon changed there. And if we wanted to clear that filter, uh, we can again click the filter drop down menu button and uh, just click this uh, or select this clear filter from quantity uh, item right here at the list. And that will clear that filter from that particular column only and also uh, clear the filter drop down icon button right there to change it back to the default icon. So that's a very quick overview of how to apply filters using these filter drop-down menus. As you can see here, we can uh, filter and also sort. So there's some sorting features at the top, and then we can apply filters down here as well. We can apply different number filters, and we can also use these uh, drop-down 
or this check boxes here, these list box with these check boxes to apply filters as well. And one really important thing to note with these filters is that the drop down menu changes based on the data type in the column. So in this particular case, we have numbers in this column. This quantity column contains numbers. So we'll see a number filter uh, right here in this selection. If we go to this product name uh, column here, this product name column contains text. So if we hit this drop down here, we'll see text filters right here. And then uh, there's also a data type for dates. So these change based on the data type. So this particular column order date contains dates. And if we click this drop down filter here, we'll see some date filters uh, right here. And we'll also notice that in the uh, list box here, the dates have been grouped by month, year, day, and even hour and minute if your dates have timestamps. So you can expand out uh, these uh, boxes here. You can expand out these groupings to see the days within the months and the months within the years and so on. So these are some really great features that allow us to hide and unhide rows or apply filters to uh, these columns of data in Excel uh, based on specific criteria. So I now want to talk about some advantages of using Excel tables when filtering data. So here we have another sheet that just has that same basic data range, and we're going to go ahead and insert a table. So the first thing I'll do is just select any cell inside the data range here and go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and then click the Table button. That'll bring up this Create Table window. And I'll say OK. And that has formatted this range as an Excel table. And if you're not familiar with tables or you haven't used them yet, I have a whole nother video on how to use Excel tables. But one of the main advantages here is that you can see that the filter drop down menus have automatically been applied to this table. So we have our same filter drop down menus here, and we can go apply filters just like we would on a normal range. Now, another advantage is that when we add rows, or columns to this table, the new data is automatically included in the filtered range. And that doesn't always happen with regular ranges. So this is one really big advantages of tables that can save us a lot of time. So for example, if I add, let's just add a new column here. I'm just going to type the word revenue right here and hit enter. And you can see that the table has been extended to automatically include this new column. And I can also see that I have the filter drop down menu right here, and I can go apply filters to this column. And of course, with uh, tables, if we want to do a quick formula here, we'll just say quantity, oops, quantity times price like that, hit enter. That once we enter a formula, the formula will automatically be copied down or filled down the entire column. So a lot of great time saving features there. But the main one is that we don't have to turn these filters on and off to include new rows or new columns of data. And another time saving feature is the total row. So with tables, we have this great feature called total row. Just select any cell anywhere inside the table here, go to the design tab on the ribbon and click this total row checkbox right here. That will add this total row to the bottom of the table. And you can see it's already uh, added a subtotal function here that's going to sum up this entire column. So that's the sum of the entire column. You can change uh, the metric that you want to calculate by just choosing count or average or sum right here. And that will change the function or the formula inside Excel. Now, a great feature here is that as we apply filters, so again, if we go back here and apply the filter uh, for this column for Andrew, now we're only seeing the rows that contain the word Andrew. And the formula right here recalculates to only show us the total for the visible rows. So just these particular cells right here, these visible cells, uh, we'll see the total for that. So this is a really handy feature uh, when you're tying out numbers to a report or a pivot table or some other summary uh, report. You can just use this total row to quickly tie out numbers. And this will recalculate to only calculate on the visible rows. So really great features here with tables. And then one additional feature advantage with uh, filtering with tables is that you can have multiple tables uh, or multiple filters filtered ranges 
on one worksheet. So here you can see I have a table, I'm sorry, I have a worksheet with two different tables here. There's a region table over here, and then a month or a calendar table over here. And as we can see, I have uh, these filters applied to both tables, and these work independently of each other. So if I, I, if I just wanted to apply a filter here just for Q1, that works independently of this particular table over here. Now it will hide the rows, so we won't see those rows for this table as well, but we can apply filters on multiple tables or multiple ranges within one worksheet. And this is not possible with regular ranges. So with regular ranges, if I go back here to my original example, this would be a, just a regular range with filters applied. We cannot have multiple ranges. Uh, we cannot apply filters to multiple ranges in one sheet. So we can only do that with Excel tables. So again, Excel tables have a lot of great benefits there, advantages that will really save us a lot of time when filtering data in Excel. So I now want to share some shortcuts for working with larger data sets because typically our data has a lot of columns and it's much harder to navigate like this example here. And the first thing we typically want to do is determine if any filters are applied to this particular range or table. And there's a few ways to do that. Obviously here we can see that uh, if we look for the filter dropdown icon, uh, this lets us know that this particular column has a filter applied to it. But sometimes it's difficult to search through our data and look for these icons. So there's a few other ways we can tell if filters are applied. Uh, the first here is in the bottom left corner, you'll see this filter mode notification. And la that lets us know that filters are applied to this particular range or uh, worksheet. We can also see these uh, that the header rows over here on the left, the header numbers have turned blue. They have blue text. So that lets us know that a filter is applied. And then we can also see here on the data tab of the ribbon that the clear button is enabled and you can see it has some color there to it. Uh, and that lets us know that there's filters applied. If we click the clear button, that'll clear all the filters on the table or range. So if there's multiple columns filtered, this is going to clear all the filters. So if I click that there, that'll clear all my filters. And you'll see that that button has now been disabled. And that lets us know that there's no filters applied to this particular range or table. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo that so we have our filters applied again. So like I said before, we typically spend a lot of time looking for this little icon right here and we, we have to scroll horizontally back and forth to the left and right through the worksheet to find these icons. So here's another one here that lets us know that this ship city column has a filter applied to it and if I keep scrolling over to the right, I could see that my category column also has a filter applied, as does the quantity column. So we typically spend a lot of time doing this horizontal scrolling with the mouse and the scroll bar down here at the bottom to find these particular filters or these columns that have filters applied. So there's a few shortcuts for that within Excel, nothing that's gonna save us a ton of time, but instead of using the mouse, we can hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and then press page up or page down. And that's going to page up and page down to the left and right. So if I hold down the Alt key and press page down, that'll page uh, down to the right or scroll one screen to the right. And I can continue to do that by holding down Alt and pressing page down. And that'll scroll me to the right. Uh, pressing page up will scroll back to the left. So that's one quick way to get to the left and the right. You can also, if you have uh, your cell selected in the header row here, you can hold down the control key and then press right arrow, and that will jump you all the way to the end of the table, select the last uh, particular, or the last used cell in the table or the range, and then if I hold down the control key and press left, that'll jump me back to the uh, left, the most left cell, or the first column of data in this particular range. So those uh, shortcuts can help a little bit. However, they don't really allow us to quickly find those filtered columns or the columns that have filters applied to them. So the FilterMate add-in has a feature called Filter Hop that makes this process much, much faster and easier. So once you install the FilterMate add-in, it'll appear, the Excel Campus tab will appear, appear right here in the ribbon. 
and there's this button right here called filter hop and clicking that button will jump me to the first column in the table or range that has a filter applied to it. So I'll click that button and we can see now that this customer name column has been selected because it has a filter applied. If I click filter hop again, that will jump me to the next filtered column in the table. So now Ship City has been selected for me and I can just continue to hit filter hop. I'll click it again and that'll jump me over to the category column because it has a filter applied and then hit filter hop again and that jumps over and selects the quantity column. So we typically spend a lot of time trying to find these filtered columns and this very simple filter hop feature here uh, just allows us to cycle through each filtered column in the table or range and select it and it'll save us a lot of time from all that horizontal scrolling. So I hope you enjoyed that video and learned something new. In the next video, I'm going to share some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts for the filter dropdown menus. These shortcuts will save you a ton of time when working with filters. Before you go, I have a quick question for you. I would like to know one of your favorite shortcuts or tips for working with filters. Please leave a comment on this page with one of your favorite filtering tips. Or you can also ask a question about a tip you would like to learn. This will be a great learning resource for everyone. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.